Our farm's really lucky to be in a supply management industry. It allows us to uh, grow in a sustainable manner and to be compensated uh, fairly. Um, uh, we, we see it as a huge uh, benefit. My parents immigrated in 1993 and, and started with about 40 cows in a, in a really old dairy farm and, and had not much growing up and they were able to continuously invest in their farm and, and to keep growing it in a sustainable manner. And uh, 20 years later now we're, we're growing even faster than we have before. And, it's to meet, be able to meet the consumer demand for, for milk products and, and that's all through supply management. Supply management is a risk management tool that is available to all poultry and dairy farmers in Canada. We operate under a system that um, has three important pillars we call them. One is import control, one is a fair return for, for farmers and the other one is or grazing the right amount of chicken for the market. One of the other benefits of, of supply managers is, is that it requires all of us to be a part of our respective organizations. And it's through those organizations that we really have a lot of ability to see that all our farms are meeting our food safety and uh, animal care requirements. It's just a great news story for consumers and farmers and just proud to be a part of it. I certainly feel fortunate as an egg farmer that I have the system of supply management, which is really just a system, a domestic uh, system that matches um, the need for eggs. So, so just to back up, I guess, I guess the step, um, there are five industries that um, run under supply management nationally. Those are the egg industry, the broiler industry, the meat bird industry, the broiler breeder, the hatching industry, the turkey industry, and the dairy industry. Those, those five sectors work on a domestic program where we match supply and demand. So, you know, lots of studies and, and background actuarial work happens to say, you know, we have this kind of population, we need this much milk or eggs or chicken. And that is then matched up on the farms in terms of the amount of birds or eggs that we can produce. And the other piece that works with that is, is we have the economic piece. So we use a cost of production formula that's verified every few years to say, these are the real costs to produce a dozen eggs. And so we are able to charge that back to the consumer and so the consumer is responsible and we don't have to rely on any subsidies. And we're also lucky that our Canadian government supports us with supply management by saying, we wanna keep as much of production of these types of industries in Canada as possible. And we want that production first. And that's why we want to restrict certain amounts of imports into the country. And that doesn't mean that we don't have imports. We have imports of all of these commodities, but we want to supply Canadians with a Canadian product first. And if we can't, then we will bring in product from outside our borders. And so those are sort of the three pillars of supply management, which I think are really, really important to making sure that our industry is sustainable in the long term. So the benefits of, of supply management, there was a time at which uh, you just kind of had to hope that uh, somebody was going to buy your milk and they were going to buy it at a price that you were able to keep the doors open up uh, in your operation. And there are lots of places around the world today where that is not the case. In Canada, with supply management, um, we, have, we take out all the highs and all the lows on the milk price. So we have a steady and predictable price that we can work with day to day. Um, it allows you to be prosperous with what you have. Uh, if you couldn't find a buyer for your milk or if you couldn't find a buyer for your eggs or any sort of supply managed commodity that uh, you might as well pour it down the drain or throw it out rather than sell it because you're losing money either way every single day. And so supply management ensures that there's always a buyer and you know that the buyer is going to buy it at a price that you can keep your operation going. Uh, everybody knows that the bigger your operation gets, the bigger the margins get and the smaller your operation is, the harder those margins are to find. Supply management gives the little guy a leg up. The limitations of supply management, um, I think there are criticisms of supply management that are completely valid. 
Um, but I, I think when you weigh the benefits of supply management versus its limitations, it comes out ahead of ahead out of every um, form of uh, out of every milk industry that you see across the world. So in particular, it is hard to get started dairying in Canada. It's hard to get started with eggs, but you could make that argument anywhere that it is hard to get started dairying in the States. It's hard to make a living in agriculture in general. Um, so the cost of quota is quite prohibitive. The cost of land and that's unrelated to supply management is prohibitive as well. So supply management is really important for us. It is really because it gives us the safety feeling. Like we had to buy quota to get into the supply management. So supply management means that you have a guarantee that somebody will take your eggs. For us, it gives us a certainty. So you buy your quota, it is not cheap, it's expensive, but at least you get the guarantee that one hatchery, and we only have three hatch, three and a half, four, we have four hatcheries. So we are certain that one of those four hatcheries will buy our eggs. Because for, I can give you a little example of what happened in Holland when they took away the supply management. A lot of dairy farmers start building farms, like big, big dairy farms. Way too much milk, not enough places to, to sell your milk to, so the milk price went down. A lot of dairy farmers cannot farm anymore because nobody wants their milk. And if they want their milk, the price is so small that you lose. So instead of having a nice farm and having a big farm with a lot of cows, having all your milk going guaranteed to one supplier, it wasn't there because those suppliers were like, oh, we can choose because everybody's building dairy farms. There's so much milk for us, we'll just lower the price. So the farmer was going maybe break even or not even being break even. So all those young farmers that start building those big barns with a big loan on it, couldn't afford it anymore. So there, there you had the example of having supply management, not having supply management, nobody happy. Supply management to me, I'm lucky enough, I'm the third generation. My grandpa was raising birds before supply management and I often heard the stories of him saying, there would be some, some flocks he didn't make any money, some flocks he made a little bit of money, some flocks he just broke even. So with supply management, I think in my mind, it's the stability of you're getting a fair price for the product you raise. So with getting that, you can maybe do upgrades to your farm. So you're doing, um, you're upgrading your farm for in the future, you're growing better products. You can, so getting a fair return for your product. You, a guy can invest in his farm. You can invest in efficient efficiencies for your farm to do a better job. There's always a market for the product you're building. And that is good. That's good for the consumer as well. The consumer isn't going to get the price swings in the market. If, uh, if there was not enough turkey one month and there's a surplus of turkey the next month, it's all with supply management, you're constantly feeding the market what the market needs. One of the pillars of supply management is import controls. If we didn't have those import controls, we could be flooded with product from the States. I've been, a, I've been to meetings where they say the fifth, the fifth largest turkey producer in America can, can supply all of Canada. That's just not Alberta, that's Canada. So with our import controls, we're keeping the local guy alive. And with that, can Canadian consumers are getting a well-grown product from Alberta farmers, following flock care programs, following on-farm food safety programs, and locally grown. If you're eating a turkey from Lilydale, or Sunrise, it's probably grown by a person not too far from your house. 